Let me tell you something. They say big risks bring big rewards. Scared money don't make no money. But big risks sometimes have big consequences that you just cannot get yourself back out of like a life sentence. And you can't free yourself from them people, their prison. Shout out to the people them going out to work and coming in from work. Extra special big up and shout out to the people them who work extra jobs. Some people have two jobs and three jobs. Them get extra respect from me. Why? Because it's easy to go out there and get into stuff. And all of us come from a kind of background where we have some connection to some fast money. Or we know somebody where they're on the juggling or the hustling and can make some money. But... <clears throat> When the consequences come, boy, some people can ball. Me not cry for nobody, you know. Some people choose their path, right? Like the story that we're about to talk about right here. First of all, this brother name alone made me wonder what happened to his parents. Because me could have looked upon my wife now and she looked upon me. And as husband and wife, our baby mother and baby father. And we decide to say, yes, man, we're going to name him Rakoko. That's the name of our son? Rakoko. Say his name again, babe. Rakoko. Rakoko Williams. Even reading it in the headlines, I'm thinking they must have made a mistake. Who the hell names their child Rakoko? Not 1950, 60, 70, 80, 90, 2000s, or even modern day. Not time in our history that name the door 15. But the boy are bad like yours. And him bad from long time. But him come at the right place come bad. And now them bad him up. So him is now doing a life sentence in prison in the United States of America. Man never kill nobody you know. But him get a life sentence. Here why? His criminal history dates back to more than two decades. Long run, short catch is what we call it. And it includes a 2004 conviction in the UK because him bad in the UK first before he came to the United States of America. Yeah, the police said he was in the UK and he was dealing crack cocaine and heroin. That was his specialty. And he was terrorizing the streets of the UK, doing all kind of something. It was a real bad man. And people did really afraid of him. And so the UK government decided that, you know what, we can't have you here anymore. So they deported him to Jamaica. But... Like a true escape artist and star that he was, Rakoko Williams, less than a year later, police arrested him again after he tried to enter the United Kingdom again on a fake passport. Imagine the UK threw you out, deported you. You must know say your face is in like some kind of picture database, right? Even though 2004, it ain't like how it is today with technology update. But still, it was still advanced back then to a certain degree. And in less than a year, my man get a fake passport and headed right back to the same country that just threw him out. <laughs> he, he didn't say, let me go try going to another country. And then make my way in from there. The man says straight back to the UK. Because I have business to handle. And guess what they said. Them call him up at the airport and say. Oi mate. You can't come in you know. Um, Hangle him again. Fling him back into Jamaica. Guess what he did. You would think he would chill for a minute right. Nah. Homie made his way into the United States of America. Yeah. After he ended up getting deported from the UK again. He made his way into the United States of America. Now, once he made his way into the United States of America, he said, yes, got off that boat or that plane or whatever and started rubbing his hand like how Birdman was rubbing his hand before he was kissing Lil Wayne or rubbing his hand every time he saw Lil Wayne. Pause. So, a federal court jury in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, convicted the Jamaican national on multiple drug and money laundering counts. A few people have covered this story before, but there's some information here that they have not covered concerning this case. So we will 
cover it with such information, right? The details. <coughs> he was convicted in a drug and money laundering scheme, including violating the kingpin statute for running an ongoing criminal enterprise in western Pennsylvania and across multiple states across the United States of America. Now, it's one thing to be caught with drugs and be tried and convicted for the drugs you were caught with. It's another thing when they come at you with the kingpin statutes. The kingpin statutes were put in place actually to get rid of mob bosses because they would always try to infiltrate the mob, but they couldn't. And then they would always get like the underbosses or they would get like the workers of the mob bosses, but they could never get to the boss. So they started putting in place these kingpin statutes to pin the mob bosses. Now, when you get hit with a kingpin statute, of course, it carries a life sentence, right? So the jury deliberated for about five hours. That's it. Before finding Rococo Williams guilty following a three-week trial in front of the U.S. District Judge Joy Flowers Conti, he faced a mandatory life term in federal prison, and this is what you call blowing trial. So the man blow a trial. Blowing trial means you took it to trial. You know your lawyers might come and they might say, hey man. There's a plea deal on the table. The plea deal says you get hit with 20 years. With good behavior and everything, you could probably be out in 15 years, right? But you're going to have to lay down for them 15 years and do the time. Or, if you reject the plea deal and you take it to trial, they have a mandatory life sentence on the table waiting for you. If you say, eh... I don't want no deal. I'm taking this to trial because I think I could beat it. And you take it to trial and you lose. That's called blowing trial. So he blew trial. And he got hit with a mandatory life sentence in federal prison. Now prosecutors said that Williams, who was 41 years old at the time, he was off a Lauderhill, Florida address. That was his base. And from out of Florida, he supervised more than a dozen people. Many of them were young ladies in dire straits. Young ladies who were in poverty. Young ladies who had a rough life. Young ladies who needed financial assistance and so on and so forth. Some of them were probably even hooked on drugs. Some of them were used for other things like prostitution because they were pimping and pandering, etc., etc. And he would use these women in his cocaine trafficking ring that shipped multiple kilos of cocaine from Arizona and Nevada to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Atlanta, Georgia, Charlotte, North Carolina, and New York City. It was a real entrepreneurial experience. The man was a real entrepreneur with a diversified portfolio spanning many states in the United States of America. You know, we often think, damn, a lot of people I know that have college degrees and intelligence don't even know how to set up a business and scale their business to the point where their business is spanning multiple states. But these guys who never went to no college and barely even went to school, high school, probably dropped out of school at junior high level, elementary level, they have the intelligence, right, to understand the metric system. They have the intelligence, the, the, the wherewithal, the fortitude to go forward and start a major cocaine trafficking enterprise and hire a whole bunch of people and govern and run your employees, whatever it may take, and span multiple states and make millions of dollars. <coughs> 
you know, sometimes I often think that these guys, man, if given the chance, or if they had channeled their intelligence in the right direction, these guys could have actually been uh, corporate CEOs of billion-dollar corporations. But that's for another day, because that will never happen now for Rococo Williams. Rococo Williams, the jury determined that he was responsible for distributing 150 kilos of cocaine using a Carnegie stash house as a distribution point locally. Now, they said that they are absolutely sure that he did way more than this 150 kilos, but they were able to track at least 150 kilos so they go off of what they were able to track because when you take it to court it can't be about what we think he was doing it could only be about what we can prove your honor that he was doing right so trial evidence showed that williams relied heavily on these young women who were a lot of them were from desperate backgrounds and he used them as mules to haul his cocaine in their luggages, on airplanes, strapped to their bodies, in their offices. Yeah, that means that they were sliding cocaine into their pum pum and to their body hole and these kind of things, strapping it to their bodies uh, when they would take airplanes for local flights going in between states. Sometimes they would drive on the road from state to state. They would have <coughs> stash boxes built into cars, so on and so forth. Or they would take airplanes sometimes because he had to make a special delivery and those they would stash in special compartments that were made for their luggages to go on the airplanes. Really intricate detail. But you see the feds, right? The feds, they don't just come and bust you and aha, we see you. You have a, a suitcase of cocaine and it has six kilos. You're going to prison. No, the feds will work with it work with it keep on documenting keep on taking pictures keep on writing notes and they keep on adding up and keep on collecting names catch another female who are you working for rococo williams hey girl you better tell us the truth or you end up doing 25 years in prison and you will never see your son until when you come home that two-year-old is going to be 27 years old okay i'm working for rococo williams aha that's the guy we're looking for now here it is you will continue working for rococo williams and we will just continue to monitor we're not fucking with you because we don't want you we want him He's the big fish. They did a lot of that to Rococo, and he didn't even know it. Welcome to America. Uncle Sam, don't play. They play a different game here. When you skinning your teeth thinking you winning in America, just know that if you do it wrong on a big level, that somebody is well aware of what you're doing, and they're only allowing you to do that for a certain period of time until they get what they want out of it. Then they're coming for you. That's factual. If that's not enough to keep you out the dope game knowing that, then I don't know what is. I just thought I would pass along that little piece of knowledge for anybody who still thinks that it's something that they can get into and get out of really easy. So the women, according to the report, they also transported drug money back to Phoenix in hidden compartments inside their luggages. And of course, you know, you can only travel with so much money at a certain point. If law enforcement catches you with $100,000 cash, you're going to have to explain where you got $100,000 from. What kind of business do you run? Where do you, are you paying taxes on this type of money that you're getting, etc., etc., right? So they would design ways to transport the monies as well as the drugs across state lines. And Rococo Williams was in charge of all that. According to court documents, he was the mastermind of all that. And he ran his business with a heavy fist. Williams and his cohorts, the homies, his homeboys, his members of his group, his gang, his crew... According to law enforcement in the U.S., they ruled with an iron fist. 
and they used threats of violence or straight up violence and they used rape also as a means of controlling the women they would beat the women they would force themselves on them rape these women they would force the women to perform sex acts they would lock them in they would threaten their families they would tell them if you don't do this or if you do that then we'll go after your children or we'll go after your mom or your dad these kind of things at least four of them were raped by Rococo and his gang members the government said evidence also showed that in one case Rococo Williams threatened to kill one of the young ladies who was transporting his drugs for him and threatened to kill her entire family if she cooperated with law enforcement so you know how that goes already now homeland security agents and state police along with police in various jurisdictions police from different states wearing different uniforms all these police they started putting their heads together and they made multiple seizures of cocaine and cash during this investigation alone on one particular search it resulted in 337,000 US dollars in cash in a secret suitcase compartment as one of the ladies was transporting this money from state to state for him. A search of Rococo's hotel room when they ran down on him one time in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania region, that turned up 17 kilos of cocaine in his hotel room and 192,000 US dollars in cash. Now, if you want to talk about somebody that's getting to the money, this is the person that was getting to the money. Listen, if I, I know people that's been in, the, in, in America, or as we can say, people who they're firing from a long time, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And if you check their life savings, they don't have $192,000. They don't have $337,000 US dollars cash saved up towards their retirement. So this man now walking around with this type of money, holding this type of money on a regular basis, right? Passing this money through on a regular basis, kicking his hotel room door and you find this much cash just laying there. He was a big guy. And they wanted him bad. Now, in addition to the guilty verdict, the jury determined that another $400,000 in cash and $200,000 in jewelry and a BMW that Rococo was using to transport cocaine will all be forfeited and handed over to the U.S. government. So on top of finding the $192,000 cash and then finding the $337,000 cash, they found another $400,000 cash and then another $200,000 cash and a BMW. Well, the $200,000 was in jewelry and the BMW was an up-to-date brand new BMW SUV that was used in the process and of course the laws have something here that says if you're caught committing a crime using a certain vehicle they can confiscate that vehicle in the in in the state of florida where i am at they actually have one that says if you're caught soliciting prostitutes in your car they can confiscate your car and you won't have a car anymore just because you put your head out the window like you're there, back road at Jamaica, yeah, I said, psst, what go on? Yeah, how much? And she said, 40 dollar, 20 fuck and fuck, and then police run out on you, and then there goes your 20, 30 thousand dollar car, right? Y'all be careful out there. <laughs> Anyways, Williams, criminal history, like I said in the beginning of this, dates back two decades, and it includes his time and his conviction in the UK where it is said that he started before he even 
made it into the United States of America. Now, he is an illegal immigrant in the United States of America. He didn't come to the U.S. with proper papers. So that's to tell you also that trouble is there. What will they do to him after he has finished serving his mandatory life sentence? It doesn't say life sentence without the possibility of parole, but it says a life sentence term. And a life sentence term is usually a mandatory 25 years before he is eligible for parole. Janua Star, there are people that kill people and didn't get 25 years before they're eligible for parole. But you know how the cookie crumbles. And like I said before, I'm not going to cry for nobody because you did the crime. I guess you'll have to do the time. And you had a very long run because they've been tracking you since 2004. So in 2024, I hit that. Mm -hmm. 20 years on the run, making moves. And then it all comes crumbling down. My question is, is it worth it? For his sake, I know for a fact he'll be deported from the United States of America back to Jamaica to start all over again. So for his sake, I would say he's 41 now. He'll be 66 going on 70 by the time he gets out. That's kind of like too old to be trying to sneak through borders into other people's country and transport drugs and hold down a gang and, you know, beat up some people and use your muscles and whatnot. Age will be taking care of you then. So I hope over the years you are putting away a little something so that when this is all said and done, you can go kick back a yard, enjoy some beach life, and enjoy the rest of what life has to offer. Plus, 20 years in, in um, America prisons, my friend, everybody who do that traumatize. Anyhow, we'll leave this one right here. And as a deterrent, I encourage anybody who's thinking about doing this type of lifestyle to have a listen to this story and know that, yes, if they hit you with that kingpin statute, then you are facing a mandatory life term in the u.s prisons good luck all right and again shout out to the people them going out to work and coming in from work an extra special shout out to the people who work multiple jobs i have a utmost respect for you god go with the rest of them because me can go and me now go i'm out peace